Oh boy. Look at that. Oh my goodness gracious. All right. Oh my goodness gracious, we're rescuing two dogs today. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. So today I'm going to be meeting with a lady named Allison. She's into dog and cat rescues and she's trying to become familiar with the Plum Grove area. And I told her, I said, you know what? The timing is perfect because Jamie and I are spending less time in Plum Grove. That means less time doing our normal rounds. And so to know that someone else is going to step in and start doing our beat, if you will, is just really awesome. So I don't know if she'll let me video her. I don't know if she's, the, not everyone likes to be on video. Not everyone, you know, does this kind of thing. But um, I will try to see if she'll let me introduce her and she can talk a little bit about what she does and her experience in dog and cat and horse and horse rescue. So I was able to convince Allison and Hannah to join me on a video. Right now, we are driving down into the neighborhood and I'm gonna show them our stomping grounds, the areas that we normally do our feedings and kind of introduce them to our area. But what I really enjoyed hearing about was Allison talked about a connection they have to Iowa and your dog rescue. Well, first of all, introduce yourself. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your uh, your your Facebook page and whatnot, and then tell us about this connection to Iowa. Yeah, so um, our rescue is called East Texas Hoof and Paw Animal Rescue. Um, I moved down to Houston area about a year ago for my husband's job. Had no idea about the dog crisis down here, neglect and such. And so um, we found a stray or two and it just kept happening. So we started the rescue, just decided to build the connection slowly up there with volunteers and fosters. So now once a month we go up there, we take anywhere from 20 to 30 dogs, sometimes a couple cats in there. So you're getting 20 to 30 dogs a month from around this area. Yeah, and we live a lot, you know, the Plum Grove area Plum, yeah. especially. And then you are driving them all the way to Iowa. Myself and, then, and a volunteer every and, month. Yeah. And then in Iowa, you're finding homes for these animals. Yes. Oh, wow. About 80% of what we take up there is pre-adopted, and then we have the others go to foster homes. That's beautiful. Yep. I'm curious. So when people look to adopt a dog and they reach out to you guys, are they looking for a certain breed? Do they just want to have a rescue? Uh, sometimes. So we do use uh, Pet Finder as a source oh, for... Pet Finder. Uh, on there and they can put either a size they like, gender... Um, we put in there different like characteristics of the dogs. Okay, so Hannah, so where do you tie into all of this? You are <laughs> living in Iowa now? Yes. Okay, yeah. and you've, to... go ahead. I'll... No, no, I'm sorry. I was just born and raised there. Um, started helping Allison about, I'd say, what, about a, almost a year ago. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. And so how often do you make it down? Um, I'd say every couple months now, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I brought her down beautiful. in February and showed her. This area actually, this gas station was the first place we went. So y'all yeah. already met, y'all already seen the Valero then, huh? Yeah. A little bit. All right, let me stop this video now. Let's get turned in here. So the funny thing is I'm showing her what I've always thought was kind of our little, our beat. This is like our beat. And these are the same paths, the same places that you've rescued dogs from. So that yeah. makes me wonder how many more are there if we've done what we've done and you guys are taking them up left and right and that's crazy how they keep replenishing on sale they just keep yeah. new ones fill in where the old ones are that's so sad to me i think a lot of it is cultural not believing in spay and neuter yeah or containing their dogs yeah obviously yeah we feel the same way i've talked about before that a lot of folks want the american dream and they find it here, they start. They have to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. And so they wanna start here, which is great, but they don't always have the uh, resources to fence in a yard, maybe. Uh, oh, they're hungry, look how hungry. So this is neat. These ladies have a network with people in Iowa, I think that she said, and they rescue dogs from here and they send them 20 to 30 dogs a month. Now, guys, when listen to this, this is what's so crazy is that Allison takes them to her home 
and will house them for that long at her house until she can transport them all up. And I love that. That's just, that's, that's true. Well, you know, what Jamie and I do by coming by and feeding and watering is, is, is nice and it kind of sustains them for a while longer. But what she's doing is truly God's work, y'all. That's truly God's work. Now, listen, I don't know these ladies from the next guy, okay? I don't know them. I have no affiliations, no connections, except for the fact that I met them while feeding dogs. And I saw that they have matching shirts, and that got my attention. <laughs> Can I try to get out and love them? Yeah. I think I'm going to run them off, though. I think that most of these dogs are always scared of men. Have y'all ever noticed that? Sometimes, yeah. Babies. Hey. Hello. Hey, you guys. Hello, boys. I think they're, yeah, they're both boys. Yeah, they're both boys. Hi, buddies. I love the one with the white socks. That's really pretty. I guess they're probably siblings. Yeah. Hi, buddies. Boy, they are hungry. They are. Hi. Hello, boys. Yeah, look at the ribs on that one right there showing bad. Oh my goodness. <laughs> look at that tail wag. So, on a normal day, what would you do? Would you take these both, put them in a kennel, drive them to your home, and I, then from... I'd like to do that with everyone we find out here. The thing that we struggle with is finding foster homes. Yeah. And we rely off that, you know, families that will bring a dog or two, a couple of puppies or an adult in yeah. that are willing to help us potty train them, keep them safe, uh -huh. hold them through a, for the time period for us to get them fully vaccinated. Okay. Oh, I got you. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then they temporary, temporarily house them until we find a new doctor for them. Gotcha. Um, and the more foster homes we have, the more dogs we can save, essentially. And... Um, yeah, so we are pretty full right now. I hate leaving dogs, but... Yeah. How nervous are you about this? I think he'll be fine. It's going to be... Well, him. then we want to grab the more scared one yeah. first. Yeah, and I can come around. You can grab him if you want me to grab him. I feel weird just oh, watching, yeah. like I'm not helping at all. No, you're fine. Just you film mm -hmm. and... It's okay. You're going to sink down. Oh, boy. <laughs> boy. All right, come on. Let's go oh, to the truck. Boy. Come on. Let's get off the house. All right. Oh my goodness gracious, we're rescuing two dogs today. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. All right, set the other one in there. They can go in the seat, that's okay. All right, so as usual, we're going to take these two rescues. These, oh my goodness, I love that one right there. And we're gonna put them into a fresh, clean stall. We have all of our fresh bedding here. We're gonna put some food and water, and then we'll make us a, uh, an appointment. Oh, you're handsome. Can I, can I love you? Can I love you? I've not put my hands on him yet. Can I love you? Oh boy. <laughs> He's kind of scary actually. And then we will make a vet appointment. Oh my goodness. Look at your, how can he have such lanky ears, such <laughs> lazy ears? This one here has all perked up and very handsome. They're, they're both cute, but that one's kind of cute. And this one here's handsome. <laughs> y'all, do y'all agree? Or is that just my imagination? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to close y'all in for a second and get some water, okay? It takes me a little while. I was just saying that animals and kids usually love me, and this one over here is going to be hard. I can whistle. I can whistle. I can whistle. Oh, my goodness. I can whistle. So I can whistle. Oh, look. He's licking me. I love that. <laughs> Oh my good look how pretty he sits. He is a pretty boy. Oh, they were thirsty. That's good. Y'all get some water. Alright, so you have a chip scanner and we're going to chip scan them right now. And then what will you do when you if you find a chip? If we find a chip, we will reach out to the owner and hopefully they will get in contact with us and we yeah. get these pups back to where they belong. But of course if they have no chip, then we will get them all fully bedded and okay. vaccinated and and now you also said something that was kind of sad to me. You said that sometimes you find a chip and you reach out to the owner and they no longer want the dog. Yeah, we've, we've had several instances. Either they've given the dog away at some point, the yeah. chip never got transferred and they can't take a dog back. Yeah. Or um, sometimes we've had people just not respond at all mm. or they will straight up tell us they don't want the dog back. Oh, that's so sad. Right back in here, buddy. We got to check you out. 
So do they always put chips in the same place? Typically, yes. They can migrate a little bit, so we do want to kind of scan all around the shoulders. Nope. No and chip on we'll that one. You, but if your brother doesn't have one, you don't. It's unlikely he will. Yeah. Come here. <laughs> so what do you suspect their ages might be? I know the vet can tell with their teeth and different things, but do y'all have any idea what you're probably, looking at as far as? Probably about four to five months old. Four to five months, yeah. they're still puppies then. They've still got puppy teeth, their adult canines aren't in, which that happens around six months usually. So hear, no chips then, huh? You hear the birdie? <laughs> <laughs> He's like. All kinds of sounds to get used to. Well, Miss Allison and Hannah, I want to thank y'all for today's adventure and then just do just for God's work that y'all do. We love it. And uh, I always say that God put us on earth to be the protectors of animals and not everyone does that. <laughs> not everyone fulfills their role in doing that, but thank y'all for what you do. <laughs> you are the luckiest. He's kissing you. He is smooching on you. Oh my goodness. They're very handsome dogs. They will never have to be on the street again. No. And thank you too, Miss <laughs> Hannah, for what you do and for all the traveling. I, that must be exhausting, the traveling. <laughs> and how many days? Do y'all make it in one day, that trip? When we take dogs to Iowa, we do drive straight through. Straight dogs, through because, because of the tired. dogs. Yeah, I so bet. So then when we're done with our events in Iowa and stuff, we do make the, break it up into a couple days. Okay. Take a little break on the way back. <laughs> All right, so why Iowa? You were talking a little bit about the Houston shelters and how many dogs get euthanized per day. Mm -hmm. Tell me the difference in Iowa. So I will let you kind of chime in on that since yeah. you have worked in shelters up there. But I know down here in Houston alone at the um, shelters in the bigger city, they're euthanizing, you know, 15 to 20 dogs. A at day. least on their euthanasia list a day. Some do get pulled and saved with rescues, and that's yeah. what we try to help with, as well as the street rescuing. Um, and I've had people up north ask why we bring dogs up there, and it's just because they don't have the same crisis that we do down here, yeah. essentially. So, And then with her help, and she's been in that similar situation in Iowa in the shelters. And All right, so the two dogs will spend a couple of days in quarantine. Uh, we'll get a vet appointment. Uh, once we find out there's no infectious diseases, then uh, we'll be able to let them out and about into the yard and uh, during this time, they'll get acclimated to the sight and smells and sounds of I'm a survivor. Um, at some point, those dogs will make themselves a forever home with us or either at I'm a survivor or Longhorn Lester's, wherever, uh, whatever's best for them. I will say that it was a pleasure meeting Miss Allison and Miss Hannah. They uh, obviously doing God's work and we're blessed for people like them. Um, neat. Some things I found out as far as the um, process of taking dogs out of Texas and moving those dogs to Iowa. Iowa, right? Iowa. And then uh, sad to hear about how many dogs are euthanized each day here in the Houston area. And it's really blessed to have taken two dogs off the streets of Plum Grove and uh you know we'll be able to offer them a forever home so we hey we did it we 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 were stayed true to our word and we have our we finally have our may rescue i like the names brutus and maximus i, I like those names y'all i'm just saying i'm throwing it out there i like the names brutus and maximus but uh i have not been able to name a dog in the longest time and so it's not really my call i will let <laughs> I'll let everyone else have a stab at this one. But I want to thank y'all for watching. I'm trying to find my arms. I, my, I have nothing in my arm. My arms are dead. Like, just, Anyway, thank y'all for watching. And if you have a chance, go by and visit uh, Miss Allison's page and look at what they do. And while you're there, just say, hey, Lester sent me. No, you don't need to say that. That sounds weird. Don't, don't say that. Don't say Lester sent you. Why would you say that? Why would I even say to say that? Just forget that whole last part. Just... Just enjoy your day. Don't let your troubles fester. Come watch Longhorn Lester. <laughs> yeah, something like that.